how many more scarce do we have to have? Oh, this month it was eggs. A couple of months ago it was pork. Yeah. Clean food. It's the and clean water and all the implements that make that happen. Self-sustaining. Those are the areas to look at. And the biggest, the biggest right now as we see it, just to put this into perspective, they say that humans were created without getting into, you know, I don't know when, but they say 100,000 years ago. It took from 100,000 years ago to 1900 to put 1.6 billion people on the planet. In 100 years, we've added almost 6 billion people. There's not enough stuff out there. There's not enough resources in terms of clean food and clean water to support the planet. Those are the things to look into. And particularly, you saw the new study that just came out about the obesity rates ballooning worldwide. And hey, we are the exceptionals here in America. We're number one. So where are the trends? The trends are all in this area, particularly with an aging baby boom population that's global. How are they going to age healthy? And it's not going to be medicine. It's going to be the mind. So, for example, if you're feeling down, you haven't made it in life, you're trying to start a new one, wouldn't it be nice to go to a longevity center where you could get in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Learn how to create the future you haven't done before. Because your life is really when you were talking about the founding fathers. They weren't kids. They were adults. They were the elderly they were the ones that were respected. The markets for longevity centers, the markets for aging healthy, the markets for building community. Oh, and then as the population ages, where are the real estate trends going to be? They're going to be on the outskirts, thriving metropolises in those small cities that went down a bit when the suburbs came in, but now we're going to rejuvenate because as you get older, you don't want to drive anywhere. You go to Florida and you say only lunatics could have invented this joint. There's no mass transportation, no rail. Yeah, they got buses. You see all these old people, all you see is that George Carlin joke or Father Guido Sarducci, where you don't see the back of the head, you know? These old people driving these cars. So that's not the way to go into the future. So the future has a lot of opportunities, and the United States still has the greatest opportunity, as I see it, of any country in the world. Absolutely. Now, when we come back, I want to talk about the presidential reality show that you discussed in your new Trends Journal. Hillary Clinton being maneuvered in to be the president. Her chief of staff, basically, her top advisor is at Bilderberg. That means they're behind her. She's been many times before, been fined, Logan Act. It just illustrates for me, it's emblematic of how arrogant they are. Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, the optics of these imperial wannabe families, why not just give them crowns? What's the difference between Queen Elizabeth and Kim Jong-un? One doesn't have a crown, the other does. And as one senator said, is the presidency a crown passed between two families? Broadcasting worldwide here in the final segment with Gerald Salente. Uh, I got three children. We've got an article on Infowars.com, evil quotes by Bilderberg Group members. Most of these quotes are public that they put in books. I mean, th these are some nasty people. These are totalitarians. And they're trying to rebrand it right now. Kit Daniel's stories, excellent. Kurt Nemo's excellent. All of Steve Watson, Don Salazar, all our great reporters. I try to list them all, the show will be over. Mikhail Thalen, all the people behind the scenes, camera, TV. It, it, you know, Gnarles Barkley song says, was I crazy because I didn't know enough or because I knew too much? I just know way too much now. I'm not bragging either. It's not hard to figure out history and what's happening. Once you figure it out, it's a lot of stuff. It's kind of like if you watch baseball, you learn how baseball works. I've been watching the globalists for 25 years, and man, 
they seem to be getting worse. They seem to be getting more reckless, more wild, more crazy. I mean, what about the Russia situation, Gerald? I mean, we opened the interview with that. I mean, they're sitting in armor. Uh, there's video of Western troops battling the Russians. That's Russian area. It's always been part of Russia off and on. It's not Iraq. I mean, the, the, the globalists couldn't hold Iraq. Why do they want to attack Russia? Russia's just trying to stabilize itself. Uh, why do the globalists have this instinct? I guess your audio was cutting out for a moment. Why do the globalists have this instinct to try to wreck everything? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's the neocons. It's that, uh, you know, the Kagans, the Newland, or the, the, the wife of Kagan. And it's this, this sick mentality. They're, they're crazy people. And everybody's afraid to call a spade a spade. They're, they're megalomaniacs, they're psychopaths, and by their deeds you shall know them. And of course, everyone knows the deal that wants to know it was that when Gorbachev made the deal with Reagan, was that NATO wasn't going to expand beyond the borders of where they were. And under Clinton, they started doing it, excelled under Bush, and now, of course, we have American troops in Estonia, Lithuania, the yeah, let's area. not forget, let's not forget the UN admits that the Croats and the Muslims killed double what the Serbs did. They started the fight. Again, I'm not lionizing the Serbs, but they started it. We gave them a third of their country, blew up their infrastructure, their power plants, water, TV stations, and then put Al-Qaeda in charge, KLA to run. And then now, every few weeks, I read the foreign press where they go into Christian areas and murder everybody. I mean, this is just, it was all to take out an ally of Russia. Exactly. And, it, and again, you know, it's, it's, it, it, you asked about, you know, why are they doing it with Russia? And I was talking about FIFRA before. What was that really about? Russia. It's, it's really about Russia. And again, because most people know about sports, they made it a sporting issue. So that then the people that don't tune into anything, all of a sudden are tuned into something. And they know about it because it was about Russia. You go back to our spring 2014 Trends Journal, and it was about the Ukraine crisis and how we showed how they used the Sochi Olympics to lead up to the Ukraine crisis. Sure, sure. Stay there. Let's do five more minutes if you can to finish up this point. It's important because they want to isolate Russia so they can then point at them and say, look, they're totally isolated when they kick them out of G7. And, 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 and then now take away their World Cup. So they can't have anything for their economy. I mean, it is economic warfare, as Ron Paul has said. It is an embargo. Five more minutes with the trend forecaster, Gerald Salente. Stay with us. Visit GCNlive.com today. You were getting into this Russia situation. It's just crazy is the word. I keep overusing it. it. It just shows an arrogance, a bravada, a chutzpah. Uh, do you agree with me that it is getting worse? They are getting more insane? Or is it just we know more about it now, Gerald? No, they're more insane because smart people would do this. You made the point about, look, they can't win in Iraq and Afghanistan. Libya is a mess. You're going to beat the Russians. I mean, Napoleon couldn't pull it off. Hitler launched the largest military offensive in world history, and he couldn't do it. And it'll be the end of life. It'll be what, what Einstein said. I don't know how the Third World War will be fought. But the fourth will be fought with sticks and stones. Invading Russia is, would be like invading the U.S. Everybody's going to fight. Exactly. And it'll be, it'll be annihilation. And so the neocons think, and the military-industrial complex, by putting more uh, weapons on the Russian border, they won't be able to retaliate. They're out of their mind. And, and again, going back to how they're using the propaganda, they use this FIFRA example I said when we wrote about in the Trends Journal back a year ago how they used the Sochi Olympics. You remember, don't get on a plane to go there. They got toothpaste bombers, I tell you. Oh, and those Black Widow bombers, they're there too. And you know what else, Alex? The water is all yellow. And they shoot stray dogs and hate homophobes. By the time the Winter Olympics began in Sochi, 57% of Americans believe there would be a terrorist strike, and the ratings of America's attitude toward Russia was at a 1993 low. They're using the propaganda and disgusting human beings that are the prostitutes and the media whores 
because they get paid to put out, keep putting out those lies. What was Russia's so crime? Really Arresting Russia. all the Rockefeller and Rothschild banker fronts that came out in court and kicking them out? I mean, what was Russia's big crime? I mean, I guess not accelerating their population decline, uh, having pro-family events. I mean, what did Russia do that made them so mad? It's, it's Russia is a threat because of these sick people that believe that the United States is going to be the superpower around the world. And they just don't want to have any competition. They, you read their work. It, it, they should be in an insane asylum. Speaking of which, you heard Rumsfeld come out about how now, you know, he's not so sure about Iraq. And, you know, it wasn't good to try to export democracy. Who is he talking about? This is the little clown that lied that he, we know where those WMDs are. They're east, they're north, they're south. You remember that. You remember him coming out that the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. And then he said that he never said that. Then he said he never said they were north of Tikrit. Oh, yeah, I have the quote. It's there. Oh, I know. It's He's an incredible real. liar, almost as good as Obama. Or almost and as that's what I'm saying when you ask who these people are. They're sick people, and no one wants to call them that. Instead, they call them secretary of this, president that, a prime minister, a chancellor. Well, and I want to point out a lot of folks go, good, they want America to dominate the world. No, they don't. The very same globalists are targeting small farms, small ranches, small industry. They're monopoly men. They're worldwide using American muscle to take over the planet while we get the blame. So let's be clear. They, they want to screw Russia over. They want to screw us over as well. You got it. And that's one of the stories. It's the grand manipulation. It's a takeover. It's a multinational takeover. And they've turned this country into slave landia. We talk about the, why the markets are going up. Two reasons and two reasons only. The cheap money allows companies to buy back their stock. And the other one is mergers and acquisitions so that the big could gobble up more fire people and give them no money to work there isn't it wonderful walmart's is going to pay ten dollars uh, an hour half of their employees are part-time workers you're right gerald thank you so much thank you powerful interview